call this uh, regular meeting of Grand Fork City Council to order for December the 3rd. <coughs> and uh, can I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. For Doherty, Councillor Crank, Krog, all those in favor. <laughs> Nobody's called me. <laughs> and uh, we have three sets of minutes. <coughs> November the 19th, special meeting minutes. Motion to adopt. Councillor Smith, Councillor Kendall, all those in favor. Regular meeting of November 19th, motion to adopt. Council of Doherty, Councillor Kendall, all those in favor. And the primary committee minutes from November 19th with recommendations contained here <coughs> in. So moved. Councillor Krog, Councillor Kendall, all those in favor. Thank you. Moving right along. That's uh, reports from Council. And uh, <coughs> we'll start on the right hand side of the <laughs> Council. <laughs> Councillor Doherty, kick us off here. Well, you wish I might want to watch the report, but the hockey team is doing better. Yes, eight to one, is that? Uh, yes, and uh, minor hockey is doing good, and figure skating seems to be doing good too at the Reno. Yeah, excellent. And that's all what I have to report. Thank you, Councillor. And moving around, Councillor Kendall. <coughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, November 22nd, I attended a meeting the story and company um, in regards to the city's branding project. Uh, we received a detailed <coughs> report by uh, Matt Thompson um, and uh, the branding group <coughs> was very pleased with the direction that story and company is taking with the branding and uh, we're anxious to get on to uh, the next step which is in a couple of weeks. November 27th, I attended the Boundary Area Chamber of Commerce AGM along with Councillor Wires and several other area representatives. At that meeting, uh, it was made <coughs> apparent to me that, that there may be a, uh, a positive and long-term benefit to have a uh, liaison from the city to, uh, <coughs> to work with the regional chamber and uh, I'd ask if uh, it's something your worship and council would entertain I would be interested in volunteering for that liaison position with the uh, regional chamber of commerce on behalf of the city. Yes I, I don't believe that anyone is formally attached to that role of liaison with them and their uh, request is um, noted. It, I'm, I'm comfortable with uh, making that uh, appointment to uh, be a regional representative to the chamber for uh, Councillor Kendall. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. It's like knighthood. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that would be great. It's an important role and uh, one that's, you know, they're going through some difficult throws in terms of getting established and, and I think it would be useful, particularly with your role on EDAC. Yeah, I, I do too. Um, and on November 28th, uh, I, along with Councillor Smith, attended our monthly uh, Economic Development Advisory Committee meeting. Um, I'd like to report that the committee and its members are working uh, diligently on several projects and uh, that we have a strategic planning session um, slated for later in December. And we're looking forward to uh, taking the branding and our strategic <coughs> planning and uh, coming up with a, a worthwhile direction for the city in the future. That's the my report. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Cron. Yeah, I attended a gallery board meeting. A um, couple of things are happening over there. They've got some new artists going to be coming in. That they're, they're increasing their interaction with the schools and classes and, and they're looking at um, partnering more with the school district so that they get uh, more kids through and, and uh, create that awareness. And um, yeah, that's probably about it. Oh, their wine and cheese. How did that go? Yeah, good, good. Um, that was a success. And um, yeah, that's about it. Great. Councillor Smith. Yeah, all right. Well, on the 20th, along with yourself, uh, I attended the Deer Committee. Unfortunately, we were stood up by one of uh, the chief presenter presenters, <coughs> the Indian, the Soyuz Indian man that was going to make that presentation there for us. Uh, but I guess they're still 
going to come at some yeah, point. Yeah, if I can uh, clarify that, they didn't get proper notice. Right. Uh, there was some mix up with her email address, and I spoke to Clarence Louie, the chief, uh, today actually, and uh, okay. um, had some uh, items clarified, which we'll report back to the Deer Committee on uh, the coming meeting. Excellent. Um, on the 22nd, I was. Uh, um, participated in a webinar uh, sponsored through uh, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities on brownfield projects and noting that we have a number of brownfields here in our community. Um, it was actually uh, very enlightening and uh, I made a couple of contacts there uh, to uh, further the discussion on you know what we could do for our community um, you know as part of uh, some of the services that are offered through um, the FCM, like the Green Municipal Fund, uh, there's you know potential for for grants and in kind stuff uh, uh, if you've got a good case. Um, and then the next day, I was I partook of a FCM con conference call on their infrastructure uh, uh, stance uh, that they're going to be moving towards the uh, the federal government. Um, so they're taking quite a strong stand and putting pressure on, as are a number of municipalities in the UBCM. Um, so it was very encouraging, and I'm waiting for the um, for the um, transcribe you know, the transcription of the conference call. <laughs> and uh, the next day on Saturday, I went to the uh, Grand Forks uh, Art Gallery's wine tasting, and uh, it was an event that was, you know, everyone. The one time of year everyone gets get out there and shine, and uh, it was a good time have by all. And then along uh, with Councillor Kendall, I attended the EDAC. And uh, one of the recommendations that came out of there as we're looking to, uh, you know, looking for ways to enhance the airport, uh, it was agreed that we that EDAC, uh, you know, advise uh, council that they think it would be a good idea to change the pricing formula that's currently in place for aviation fuel. Um, the, the city collects, a, I guess, a percentage rather than uh, a rate. Uh, so it makes our gas quite a bit more expensive than other communities. Um, and uh, we, we thought it would be a good idea if we could, you know, use that, you know, to make our uh, our airport more attractive to change the way that we price our gas. Is that a big loss in revenue <coughs> for us to uh, reduce that? Well, it just makes us unappealing. Uh, you know, if why stop in Grand Forks to pick up gas if you can do it in Trail for sixty cents a liter cheaper? Or you a know, crash on the way. Or a crash on the way. Okay, and so you'll be passing that uh, recommendation to look at that. Yeah. Uh, through to the uh, administration, to the airport manager. Yeah. Okay. All right. And uh, that's, that's it. That's it. You had some motions to make? <coughs> oh, yes, I did. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, in consideration of the sustainable communities uh, thing, uh, there's a um, FCM is sponsoring a, a sustainable communities conference in Windsor, Ontario. I would like to move that council approve sending council, myself and Councillor Krog to the FCM Sustainable Communities Conference in Windsor, Ontario in February 2013. Councillor Doherty, second to discussion? It's a great opportunity. Yeah. It's well, and, and I expect an exciting report to come back on Absolutely. some innovative things that we might do. Absolutely. Question? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a comment for Councillor Weyer is here, who's doing a bang-up job on working on the float. So I hope okay, everybody's cool. on board with yeah. that. Uh, there's some really interesting directions that we won't spill the beans here, but uh, look out, we're going to be in the parade. So thank you very much, Councillor Weyer, is the initiative she's taken. She is ill and left the meeting because she was not feeling good. <coughs> um, I have a couple of items. Um, I would like to combine this again with a discussion that relates regionally and municipally, and that is the 60-40 split on the hospital uh, costing, the cost of 
buying capital items for the hospital district for the uh, interior health. Uh, we participate on that and it is a, a tax cost to us that we collect and we, we uh, our, our citizens pay. Uh, the question on the floor again, and I think I brought this to council last year, there is a motion coming forward that we tax ahead to begin to plan for uh, a replacement of regional hospitals or hospital. So it doesn't necessarily mean that we would be taxing ahead to pay for Grand Forks, but uh, that it would become uh, a fund that could be drawn on that would reduce the impact when it occurs of us <coughs> having to replace major facilities. So I will be asked to vote on that and uh, I'm certainly open to your comments on that at this point. There's a second um, item where uh, that is being done and you'll notice it around the province so in, in some ways I'm asking a philosophical question because some communities are beginning to plan ahead for policing cost increases by putting aside funds into a, a reserve for that purpose but the one uh, in front of me right now which will be at the next hospital board meeting will be whether or not we begin to um, tax for the <coughs> inevitable which is that we're going to have to replace a a billion dollar hospital uh, somewhere in Interior Health District here. So, and let me start off by telling you, I'm not really that supportive of it. I think that we, uh, there are ways that we can borrow to achieve the same purpose as taxing ahead and becoming our own bankers. Councillor Krog? Yeah, I, I was same idea when when I sat on the board as well. That topic was brought up and. Again, I wasn't comfortable with uh, the concept, you know, kind of deal with it um, when you get there. And also for the policing too, I always figured that if you start saving for policing costs, you're basically telling them that raise your costs because we're prepping for it rather than fight the, the raising costs. So. Any further comments? Hearing none, can I have a motion to accept the Regional District Report and City Council reports? Councillor Smith, Council O'Doherty, all those in favor? Mm -hmm. And we are uh, at the um, point where we're looking at next year's um, acting mayor duties for the uh, year 2012-2013 and you've had a chance to look at that rotation of acting mayors. Can I have a motion to accept that as our formula? Councillor Doherty, Councillor Kendall. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carried. Uh, and uh, the 2013 regular meeting schedule, the same thing here. Uh, if we change it, we have to give proper notice in advance, but this gives you the whole year's picture of of the, the yeah. commitments to the regular meetings. Motion, Councillor Krog. So moved. Councillor Smith, any discussion? i just like to note that the calendar includes the family day. New holiday in February. Yes, I didn't notice that. But yeah. Okay. All those in favor? That's I'm not sure huge. what that was about. But we get a new um, holiday. Okay. In February 2013. Nobody pays attention. The next item of business is the uh, environmental and building construction services. Uh, what we're looking at here is a data service infrastructure equipment to maintain services at City Hall 2013-2014. And Council directs staff to proceed with a $67,000 expenditure for the 2013 budget. Um, installing backup service and storage systems for the data center in partnership with school district number 51. Councillor Doherty, second mm -hmm. Councillor Smith. Discussion and explanation of this? Yeah, Councillor Kendall? Yeah, I'm through you, Your Worship, to whatever member of city staff. Um, <laughs> what, what exactly is this? What did we do last year? and why do we need to spend $67,000 to do it this year? Okay. Can I ask for a comment on this? Yes, Mayor Taylor. Mr. Cobain. This, the upgrade of this system, um, our system in the basement of City Hall is, is aging and does need to be replaced. 
And in partnership with Fiber Network, where the long range plan was to have all of our data servers and storage all at 525 Central location, now that we're connected with the fiber. And this is just part of the partnered upgrade with the school district, so we don't duplicate the equipment in the basement of City Hall as we need to upgrade it. Right. Is that sufficient explanation, Councillor Campbell? Yes, thank you. Councillor Smith? So is <coughs> this the, the uh, school district is also putting in 67? I understand they are sharing a similar cost, is that mm -hmm. correct? Yes, Mayor Taylor. Mm -hmm. The school district has already purchased their share. Okay. Uh, they couldn't wait any longer. They needed some of this equipment immediately. So they've already proceeded with their half of it. So this is in the partnership agreement uh, spirit of Councillor Kendall. Um, what's the time frame of this purchase? Is this um, a one-year uh, package, a five-year package? How long is this stuff going to be lasting us? It says 13 to 14, so I see a two-year time frame in, in the uh, note before it. But I open it to comment. Yes, Mayor Taylor. The 2013-2014 uh, upgrades were if we were going to do the re uh, equipment replacements in the City Hall basement. The equipment that's going into 525 will be good for the next five to ten years, okay. just like the equipment that we've had. All right, thank you. Yep. Ready for the question? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, and uh, we are down to my favorite the summary of information items. Got it. Kitchen, British Columbia. Okay, the first motion here is that we agree on the uh, disposition of these items that we're going to cover in this list. Councillor Kendall, Councillor Smith. Pitch in, British Columbia, information regarding a pitch in campaign. Receive for information. I'd like to make a comment on this. I'd I'd like to try and work. There's a couple of school groups that have come forward looking for projects. I'm wondering whether or not we couldn't try and direct some of that energy into cleaning up illegal dump sites and some of the more uh, unsightly uh, areas around the city that have been abused by people in, in dumping garbage. So I've got one or, or two people to talk to about doing something like that. But I, I really think the city should get behind this as a a yearly let's clean up our community uh, effort. Uh, so you'll hear more on this in future. Uh, Receive for information. Thank you from uh, Dania Wolosov uh, regarding the uh, scholarship that we gave her. Receive for information. Uh, correspondence from the RDKB requesting the withdrawal of Area C from the Boundary Economic Development. I would think at this point they would like a separate motion on this matter that the council, City Council of Grand Forks support the Regional District Boundary adopting bylaw 1517 to amend the RDKB bylaw 1389 to allow extra electoral area C to withdraw. Do you want that now? Uh, yeah, they've asked for our confirmation by motion that we allow so area C to, to remove themselves. So, Councillors, uh, can. Uh, Krog, <laughs> Councillor Krog, Councillor Smith, and, uh, you're making the motions? Yeah. And discussion on this matter? I, I'd just like to make a comment, and I think we've covered it before, that the Area C has some very special issues that they have to deal with. They also have a very active APC, and uh, this has been something that's been telegraphed for some time. It's not a surprise, and a lot of rationales have been uh, brought forward leading to this point of basically a paperwork process here of, of us approving it. So I uh, thank you for your understanding and ask for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? And the door is always open. Yes, it is. Come back. Yes, it is. Uh, correspondence from the Canadian Bar Association, uh, dial a lawyer, a receipt for information. There's uh, brochures at the front counter for anybody who you may be interested in that uh, particular service. Information from the BC First Party. Here's the chance, Neil. They're looking for uh, support candidates and leaders for this new concept of a political party. It's a general information uh, uh, to uh, all of British Columbia to receive for information. And uh, press release from Fish and Wildlife for the Fish and Wildlife Compensation Program 
advising of a new delivery model for fish and wildlife compensation. Um, I read through that uh, I can't see too much pertaining to us uh, received for information. Any comments on it? No. Uh, and finally, our task list for November the 19th, completed and in progress tasks. I would say it's up to date and uh, covering all of the direction we've given our employees. That's it. And a uh, motion to accept as disposed of all the items. All those in favor? <coughs> carried. Manager of Technical Services Report, Bylaw Number 1942, Amendments to the 6526 Industrial Parkway Roxall Road Closure. If you remember, we brought this forward yeah. last time for some changes that were a result of better information between the parties, and we will have first, second, and third reading. Bylaw Number 1942, first reading. I'll move the Councilor first reading, Worship. Councillor Smith. All those in favor? And second reading, Councillor Smith, Councillor Kendall, all those in favor. And third reading, Councillor Krog and Councillor O'Doherty, all those in favor. We have no late items, and I open the floor to questions from the media and the public. Well, we're setting a new record here. <laughs> <laughs> no questions from the floor. I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Councillor Doherty, some